Okay, I'm here with Dean Milton. My name is Milton. I'm going to be 75 in October. I spent 36 years of my life in Huntsville Prison for crimes that I committed. The many crimes that I didn't get called for, it seems like I paid for them with the 36 years that I went to prison for. While I was in the county jail this last time, which was in 94, I woke up in the floor amongst ashes and uh, cigarette butts and trash. And I looked up to heaven and I said, Lord, if this is all I have to look forward to, then just go ahead and let me die, Lord God. When I went to a cell finally, and while I was sitting in that cell, I said it again. I said, Lord, if this is all I have to live forward, look forward to and to live for, just let me die. And a voice as audible as, as me standing here talking to you spoke into my spirit and said, Dean, you've done enough dying. I want you to die to live for me. And I looked around, I said, who said that? And nobody answered and I surmised that it was God speaking to me in my spirit. And I told him I didn't know how to do that. And he said, follow me. And that's all he said. And a few hours, this young man came into the cell. I guess he had seen how my countenance looked, how I was depressed and upset and didn't know what to do. And he handed me a little New Testament Bible. And I began to read the New Testament Bible. And uh, in 94 of September, and as I read it, I found answers to the things that, and the, the problems in life that I was having. And I was a liar, a thief, a murderer, and a rapist all those years in drugs and alcohol. I don't mean I literally murdered anybody, but I murdered people's spirits by the acts that I committed against them. Some of the women in the that I went to bed with, I'm sure they weren't of age to give permission to have sex with them. And a, a person that's intoxicated isn't supposed to be able to give you permission to have sex with them anyway. And so I became a rapist that way. I became a murderer by murdering their spirits. And I didn't know how to tell the truth. And I was always stealing to support drugs and alcohol. and. Uh, I was always going to nightclubs and taking women home with me and drinking to where I wouldn't, didn't even know what I was doing, what I had done the next day. Well, as time went on and I kept reading the Bible, I read it four times all the way through while I was in prison this last time for, for, for 20 years. And uh, the Lord touched my heart. I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and I began to go to church and go to programs that supported Christian beliefs. I studied under just about every church in Fort Worth that would allow me to study with them. I didn't have funds, and so they sent me lessons through the mail. This man that lived next door to me had a, a Schofield King James study Bible in his locker, and it was all beat up wrinkled and and I asked him what are you going to do with that Bible he said, he said and so I I gave him five dollars in commissary for the Bible and I studied it the whole time when I was in prison that was the Bible that I learned from I found many lessons in there about you know uh, when you want to die then you can take the Bible and go inside the Bible, and the Bible will inspire you to serve, to uh, get rid of those thoughts and to live for God. And God wants us to live for Him and to bring other people into the kingdom of God. I had many opportunities in, in the penitentiary to do wrong, and I chose not to. All the people that seen me studying, and Muslims, Catholics, Christians, 
other faiths, they'd see me studying at the table and they'd come to the table and they'd want to propose questions to me about why I studied the scriptures and why I believed them. And, and I told them that uh, I had found in the scriptures that there's no truth except the truth to God and that Jesus Christ is truth. And therefore, in John, it says that Jesus Christ was the Word. And so the Word is the truth. And I began to apply those truths and the lessons in the uh, King James Bible to my life and, and my life changed and I began to change inside. I had a transformation of, of my mind where I didn't think like I used to, I didn't feel like I used to, and I didn't want to treat people the way that I used to. I prayed for my victims the whole time that I was in prison and I still pray for them today, 20 something years, 27 years later, that their lives are not affected by anything that I did. And all the people that I offended and, and sinned against, I asked God to remove those uh, feelings from their lives and to give them inspiration that not all men were like I was and that they could still have faith in their fathers, their brothers, their mothers and sisters and, and go on with their lives. Uh, today, I go to outreach ministries and talk to anybody about the Lord that wants to, that the Lord leads me to. I can do any, I can't do anything on my own. I always allow the Holy Spirit to lead me to that person. And sometimes that person says something to you that opens a door for you to witness to them about the Lord and how they can better control what's going on in their lives. Uh, yesterday, I have a neighbor that's, he's an alcoholic. He's an abusive person to himself. He recently ran his fist through one of his truck windows and cut his arm real, real bad. And he spent a couple of months in that room drinking and but he came out and he started speaking to me and, and he told me how lonely he was and how his life was in disarray. And I began to witness to him about how my life was before I went to prison and how it was after Jesus came and spoke to me and, and taught me. And, and my neighbor, as he stood there, I could see tears running out of his eyes and I knew that he needed the Spirit of the Lord to touch his heart. And so I began to witness to him by the Spirit. And God gave him all kinds of passages that I accorded to him by the Spirit on how that he needed to make quality decisions in his life to change his life. And I remember in the Word I told him, I said, that uh, there's a scripture in the Bible that says that I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, proving what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. And so I told him that the transformation comes when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It doesn't just some people it happens instantaneously some people they have to keep approaching god and and praying and reading the scriptures and studying the ship so they'll know the mind of god the word says that jesus christ is the word and that the, the word is the truth and that there's no other truth and so i said you can rely i told him you can rely on what the word says the, word says that you need to study to show yourself approved, rightly dividing the word of truth. And it says you need to choose today whom you will serve. And then it says, uh, uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And I told him, you know what, I'm standing here as a witness of the Holy Spirit speaking to you about the word. But in the Word, it says that the Holy Spirit will come inside you and you won't need a man to teach you the Word, that God will teach you the Word in spirit and truth. And as you grow and you apply these principles and these 
laws of God to your heart, to your life, then your transformation will come about, which is exactly what happened to me while I was in prison, because I had to learn to apply those laws and principles in my life while I was in prison. And I didn't have anybody around me to teach me and, and watch me every day to make sure that I was doing right or anything like that. I learned it on my own to apply these things to my life. As I went to church and listened to different preachers preached, I took the word that they preached and took it back to the scripture and, and studied it for myself to make sure that it was the truth and that it lined up with the truth. And as a general rule, it did. Uh, every time a Muslim or somebody came to the table with me, God always gave me scripture to take them to in my, in my Bible and show them what Christ meant and what God meant. And that uh, a man that uh, doesn't live by the, or isn't guided by the Spirit can't give you the truth that God gives you. And so, as I grew over time, I just wound up giving my whole will and my heart and my body to the Lord to serve Him. But while I was studying and doing all that, I had got four or two year set offs, three or uh, two, three year set offs, and four one year set offs. And the last time I got a one-year set-off, I remember I cried out to the Lord, and I said, Lord, get me out of this place. I am ready to go out there and do what you want me to do. Well, that was in uh, July or August. And in September, they came to my bunk early one morning and told me to pack all my stuff up that I was going to the walls, that I was being dis uh, paroled out. I had no knowledge that I was going to be paroled, and I went to the walls, and as I was walking out the walls, walking out of the walls, after uh, I looked around and I said, Lord, what do I do now? And he said, go buy a ticket. So I bought a ticket and I came to Fort Worth and reported to my parole officer. I was in a, a halfway house for four months. And I started getting my social security check and I rented this room eight years ago, and I'm still in it, and it's the longest I've been out of prison since 1959, or, or 1966. And uh, I thank God for that. Only God could change my heart and change my mind and, and guide me in a direction that is honorable and, and peaceful and loving and caring. I have a lot of love for the people that I go in and visit at Crossroads and at, at uh, Church of Christ and Broadwood, uh, Southside uh, Baptist Church and, and uh, Hope Church. And I have a lot of respect and, and love for those people. They do the outreach ministries of those places, touch many lives on the, of men and women on the street that are homeless. Some of them don't have clothes. Some of them don't have food, and some of them don't have any resources. And it, it doesn't matter who they are, or where they come from, we we'll just reach out to them and, and share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. My prayer for everyone that sees this video is that one day that you'll recognize that the direction that you're going, if it don't line up with the scriptures, it's the wrong way to go. And if you study the scriptures, they will give you a, a new direction that goes, that, that will guide you to the Lord Jesus Christ. And at the end, when you die, you won't have to be destroyed, body, soul, and spirit, but you will be reunited, or you will be taken by the angels to the valley of the shadow of death, right into the arms of the Lord. He will greet you and say, well done, my good and faithful child. That's what I want to hear. The Lord speak that to me. And I just praise God that I have an opportunity to stand before this camera and share some of my life with you. If we ever meet, any of us ever meet, you see this clip, this film, and 
you want to talk about the Lord, we can sit down and talk to the Lord just like we know each other because we do know each other in the spirit and truth. I thank Jose and his wife for offer, giving me this opportunity and I just ask you to be blessed to the Lord and stay well and be healthy in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you mind if I ask um, for young people? Excuse me? Do you mind if I ask you, like for young people, what is it that, what is it that um, I think started started you on on the on the wrong path? Um, like like was it was it peer pressure? Was it a death in the family? Was it you know like you know like do you mind telling me just a little bit of more, a little bit of your background? Like have you been married before? Do you have any kids? Um, it was a choice. You know anything like that or? Okay. Yeah, I can tell them a little bit. Okay. Uh, when I was young, I remember that uh, there was always a lot of negative influences around me and it seemed like that I always reached out and grabbed a hold of the negative instead of the positive um, and uh, it led me down a path of lying and stealing and running around with the wrong influences of people eventually it led me to drugs and alcohol and and uh, my, my answer to you is listen and obey your parents. Listen and obey your peers at school. The law, the law is, it says in Romans chapter 13 that there is no governing authority in existence that God hasn't allowed to be in existence. And so if you're walking against the law, you're walking against God. And if you're Walking against your parents, you're walking against God. If you're worse, walking against your your peers, you're still walking against God. You have to make choices in your life while you're young that are going to be with you the rest of your life. Education is very important. If you don't have an educated mind, then you'll be drawn away by the ignorance of other people that speak ignorant things and do ignorant things. I just encourage you to grab hold of everything that is positive and is leading you into the direction of God and success in this life. Have you ever experienced a loss like like some people when they have like their parents die or a brother die or something like that, they give up God, they give up their religion. Have you ever experienced a loss before? Uh, if you don't mind me asking. Me of all people, I, I've been married twice and both of my wives died. One died in a house fire with our two children and one died of cancer. My father was murdered by his second wife. I had a brother that committed suicide. I had another brother that committed suicide with alcohol and had an uncle that drowned right here in Fort Worth. All of those negative things, I never accused God of them. He showed me in my spirit about my wife and kids. He said, if I had been following him, the enemy could not have taken them away from me. And so there's many, many reasons in my life that I could have turned my back on God and just said, I don't believe in you. I'm not gonna obey you. Or however people speak to God like that, irreverently. But God kept, I made a decision when I was like 15 or 16 years old. And accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and was baptized, but I never lived for the Lord. But I could always feel His presence at times, especially when I was doing something that was against the law. I could feel His presence telling me that that's wrong, Dean, that's just wrong. I always went against His will and done my will. And so it wound me up in prison for 36 years. I made a quality decision to find and follow him and listen to his voice, then I started going in the right direction. And things, I don't have a lot and I don't need a lot at 75 years old. I live in a room with TV and a bed and a little kitchen, a little bathroom and a closet. But you know what, I'm perfectly satisfied at this point in my life. If God wants more from me, then I'll reach out and, and grab and take it. He offers it. Just be content. 
always keep love, joy, and peace, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance, long-suffering, and faith in your life. And ask God to let you see through Jesus Christ's loving and compassionate eyes so that you'll know which way to go and what to do. My last question is, what would you, what would you say to, to people that, to young people, to old people, you know, just to people who are struggling, struggling the fence, or just people that hold on to, to anger, hurt, and hatred, you know, and in your experience, um, you know, you know, um, what would you say to people that just hold on to a lot of hurt and, and, and hatred? I deal with a woman every day of my life that is uh, filled with bitterness and, and hatred and uh, she's depressed all the time and, and uh, she has seizures and she's a diabetic and she has real high blood pressure. And my prayer always for her is I know my thoughts toward you that they are good and that you should prosper and be in good health. Never lose hope. If you have hope, the word itself will lead you into a direction to, away from despair, away from anger and bitterness. It says in the scriptures, if you hate somebody, that, it's, that you're a murderer, that you have murdered them. And also says in the scriptures that if you come to the altar to pray and you remember that you have something against somebody, then go and make it right with that person and then come back and pray. So always seek God's will in your life. No matter how desperate you get, just if you have to, just call out on Jesus' name and listen. A lot of times we do all the talking and we don't do any listening. When you're reading the Word, if you listen to what the Spirit says, it'll give you direction, it'll give you answers, it'll give you success. And uh, I have learned that over trial and error, not just saying it, I, I have learned it by living it and understanding that, you know what, God's Word is like a two-edged sword. It will cut through any situation that you have in your life. And His Word will accomplish the things that He sent it out to do. And he said he knew his thoughts toward us that they were good and that we should prosper and good, be in good health. So the word itself is the answer to your problem. If you have friends that are Christian friends and believe in God and go to them and speak with them, oftentimes when we're speaking, the answer is right there in front of our eyes and God will show it to us don't even have to take somebody's advice. You just, God gives you the answer while you're speaking it out. It says in the scriptures, if you confess Jesus Christ with, with your mouth and believe in your heart that he died for your sins, he'll save you. he said, I shall save you. And so it, in circumstances like that, we need to use saving words, not condemning words for ourselves or anybody else. The same way when we're speaking to somebody else about stri trials and struggles and tribulations in their lives, you know. The Word is the answer. And Jesus Christ said He wouldn't put more on our shoulders than we can handle. And so we need to seek His advice and His, His direction always. My advice is for those people who don't have the Word of God to go to a bookstore, a Christian bookstore and get a Bible. Look through there and pick, don't pick one out that looks, looks good or uh, has a lot of information in it, but pick one out that the Spirit witnesses to you. And then take that book home and begin to study it. It's a book, so read it from cover to cover. That's what I did. And as I read through it, I found the Old Testament and the New Testament and the New Testament and the Old Testament. They complemented each other. And therefore, the mistakes that people made and the uh, errors that they went through and the doubt that they went through and the despair. God in His Word answers all of those questions. 
and gives you direction. Uh, thank you, Dean. Uh, I appreciate you being here today. Um, well, thank you for for being transparent, for being open, you know, for being uh, honest, loving, kind, uh, sharing your testimony, sharing your, your your time with with those that are in need, with those that are hurting, with those that 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 don't know up from down, or that need some direction, or some or some that just need a little bit of encouragement. Um, we also pray for those that that don't know God and, and that they one day accept Christ as their Lord and Savior. Um, so we, we pray for people, we pray for our friends, we pray for our enemies and and you know we just we want people to be inspired by this film, by this documentary um, from somebody who's been on this earth for, for a long time and has seen there, been there, done it, uh, gained wisdom. I've uh, been hurt, been through the many different trials and tribulations that, that people on this earth go through. So uh, we appreciate you for that. Appreciate you. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity to praise the Lord. Thank you.